Hello everyone, my name is Jessica and I'm a collections assistant in insects at the Field Museum of Natural History in Chicago. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about ladybugs. Ladybugs are in their own family called Coxalinidae. They're part of the order Coleoptera or beetles. Now beetles are the largest group of not just insects but all animals. They make up 25% of all known species. There are over 5,000 different types of ladybugs worldwide, and they live all over the place. Here in North America, there are about 500 native species. Uh, ladybugs come in all different colors and patterns, and some are not red, some are yellow. And the colors on a ladybug are generally found on the elytra, which is an outer hardened wing flap that covers and protects their delicate flight wings underneath. Most ladybugs are bright and colorful to warn predators that they are poisonous or even just taste bad. Now, this is called a posematic coloration, which is a warning using their coloration to predators. Don't eat me, you're gonna have a bad time. Many ladybugs will also excrete a very smelly substance, which you might be familiar with if you've ever tried to pick one up. Now, ladybugs are often predators themselves. They feed primarily on aphids. Aphids are small insects that feed on the juices of plants, which can sometimes be harmful to the plants and even spread disease. Because of this, gardeners like ladybugs. They naturally control the aphid populations and reduce damage to their gardens. Some ladybugs also can eat pollen, nectar, honeydew, plant sap, and even fungi. Kind of like butterflies, ladybugs also undergo something called complete metamorphosis. They have a very similar four-stage life cycle. The eggs hatch into larvae that have these really neat looking spiky exoskeletons, which is their protective outer shell that all insects have. And then they have their pupa, which is a bit like a cocoon or a chrysalis that you see in butterflies and moss, where they undergo metamorphosis and transform into their adult form. But what ladybugs can we find here in the United States, maybe even in our own backyards? Some ladybugs are rarer than others because their populations are declining. This can be caused by things like pesticides, habitat loss, climate change, and even competition from the non-native invasive species. Some native ladybugs that you might find more commonly include the convergent ladybug, which is found pretty often in the West, but it's starting to disappear in the Eastern United States. So that is something we do wanna keep an eye on. There's also the pink spotted ladybug, which is more of an oval shape and it's pink, which is pretty cool. They also do like to eat pollen more commonly than some other species of ladybugs. And lastly, there's also the parentheses ladybug that has markings on its back that kind of look like little parentheses or commas and they are a smaller species than some of the others. They're pretty tiny. Then there are also some more rare native species. Some of these may be endangered or even close to extinction. Some may have not been found for many years in certain areas. So it's extra important if you do find these to make note of them because we do wanna keep track of where their populations might be. And one example is the nine-spotted ladybug. And as you may expect, it does have nine spots on its back. It was very common here in North America about 20 years ago, but then it started to disappear very rapidly. There's also the transverse ladybug, which has markings on its back that look a bit like dripping ink blots. And it is pretty closely related to the nine spotted, but it is declining rapidly as well. And there's the two spotted ladybug, which has two distinct spots on its wings. This one can be found natively in both Europe and North America and is extremely valuable for reducing pests on crops and other plants. And then there are also the non-native invasive species of ladybugs. Many of these were introduced by humans, sometimes on accident and even on purpose. Unfortunately, these purposeful introductions were an attempt at pest control on crops but it ultimately backfired as these ladybugs disperse and don't really follow directions or rules very well. And they ended up reducing ladybug populations for native ladybugs and even became pests themselves. 
While all ladybugs do hibernate over the winter, most natives do it in natural spaces, but the invasive species will often seek out our homes. Which brings us to the multicolored Asian ladybug. This ladybug is especially known for its large colonies that overwinter in homes. This ladybug is also one of the most diverse insects in the entire world as far as its colors and patterns go. And these all just occur in one species. It was introduced from Japan to try to control pests, but it has a massive appetite and completely outcompetes some of our native ladybugs for food and will even eat other ladybug larvae, sometimes even their own. There's also the checker spot ladybug, which has these few spots on its back that look a little bit like a checkerboard pattern. And it tends to be smaller and yellow in color. It is more native to Europe, and so it was an introduced species. And lastly, there's the European seven-spotted ladybug, which is actually really closely related to the nine-spotted ladybug. And it does look very similar, but is missing one spot on each wing, resulting in the seven spots. It's important to keep track of all ladybugs, including the invasive and non-native species. Keeping track of our native populations helps us to evaluate the health of our ladybug populations, which can help us evaluate the health of our ecosystems overall. We want to remain diverse and preserve our native habitats and ecosystems because everything has its own role in the environment it lives, and that can impact everything else around them if they do go extinct. Similarly, keeping track of the invasive species helps us to see where those populations are moving and growing so that we can try to prevent further damage that they may cause if we can. But what do museums, like the Field Museum, do for ladybugs and other insects? Well, let's go find out. Here at the Field Museum, we primarily keep specimens for scientific research. And in the insect collections, we have one of the largest collections in the entire museum. We have millions of specimens in the behind the scenes areas. And most of those specimens are Coleoptera, which are beetles, because there are so many species of beetles, about half a million named species currently. And within Coleoptera, we do have our ladybugs. So we're gonna go see some of our ladybugs here. And in these drawers, we have the pinned insects. And these are some of our pinned ladybugs. These ones actually are specifically our nine spotted ladybugs or Coccinella novemnonata. And these are from all over the place. So we're gonna take this drawer out and take a closer look. So now that we have our drawer out on the table, we can look a bit more closely at some of these specimens. And what's interesting is we know these are the nine spotted ladybugs, which are declining in population around the country and North America in general. And these actually are from Long Lake, Indiana, which is where the Indiana dunes are. And they're not found very often there anymore. You can see they do lose a bit of their coloration once they are pinned. And some of these are older too, like the ones from Long Lake are actually from 1926. This creates a snapshot of that habitat and those specimens, those specific ladybugs, where they were living during what time and helps us kind of create a historical record of what was going on in that habitat during 1926. These specimens are especially important when we study things like habitat loss and climate change as some of these specimens may no longer be found in some of these areas, and you can see that timeline, or some of those habitats might no longer exist. We are able to then essentially create historical records of species that might be losing their populations or even going extinct, or may have already gone extinct. We might still be able to get some information about those species. Well, some of these are not fully identified yet, so we just have them in the ladybug family. And you can see that they're quite variable. There's all sorts of spots. Some are spotless. Some of them even are striped. 
and really small. Some are bigger. So they really do come in quite a variety of different shapes, sizes, and colors. A field museum essentially acts as a library of these insects, which then allows researchers to sometimes loan out these specimens as well so that they can further study them, sometimes identify them, or even name new species. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned a little something about ladybugs today. Or maybe you even have some more questions, which makes for a good scientist. So get out there and see what ladybugs you have in your very own backyard.